Hey everyone, it's Akul from Wiki. Welcome to episode three of Wiki's BBL Super Coach Watch. Mr. Shane, welcome. Hi, hi, Nakul. Hi, everyone. Um, we're here. We're into a third episode, um, and we're. I looked at the. Um, I looked at the sort of little counter on the Super Coach thing, which counts down to the next lockout, and we're actually down to seventeen days um, and just a few hours. Love it. Uh, yeah, so so keen, so keen to do this one. So keen to do this one, as I have been for the two ones before this. That's awesome. So I think just to, um, I guess, bring everyone up to speed, Australia has won the World Cup. So congratulations to all the Aussie cricket fans. Hope you guys are having a good time soaking up the content. Um, WBBL, it's the last week of the regular season before we get into the final, which is, I think, a few days after that. Um, BBL, as Shane just said, is just over two weeks away, two and a half weeks away. Um, and we've got a bunch more stuff happening in the company and also the cricketing summer in Australia. So there's a lot coming up and you can Google Wiki link tree. You can find the link to all our podcasts, all our content data tools at Discord, which is finally, it's drumming up with a little bit of cricket chat. I think everyone in Australia, the weather is getting nicer every day. It's getting hotter every day and people are waking up to the fact that it is cricket season coming up. So, uh, but look, let, let's get straight into to BBL Supercoach. Um, so Shane, I think with the next one, um, or the next one will actually be end up, we'll end up doing it in person, which would be cool. Um, but I, I think with the next pod, we can probably go into deep dive a little bit into the actual, you know, the stats tools that we've got, show a lot of that stuff out. Um, I know there's other like paid subscriptions and stuff you can get for this, but all of our cricket BBL Supercoach stuff is free to check out. So if you Google Wiki link tree, it's right there. But so Shane, you want to introduce the uh, the topic of this week's episode? Sure. Uh, so this time I thought, well, we've covered off two of the major uh, uh, sort of two of the major considerations in Supercoach uh, in our first two, which is player prices and um, uh, trades. And I thought, hey, let's do one on captaincies this time. So this one's going to be about captains, captaincies. Um, who should you captain? When should you captain them? Strategies, thinking, all those kinds of things. Um, and I think the first thing that really jumps out to me with with respect to captaincy is uh, it's a shorter season with a lot of doubles. There's doubles every round, bar one. I think there's some real choices this season. I don't think it's as simple as uh, captain match shot without thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always like a ton of options to consider this time. And I think the game will be different for it. No, I love it. And I was just going to say with, um, like you, you mentioned triple, oh, sorry, you mentioned doubles. There's actually a triple this year. And I think that's the first time yeah. ever we've had a triple in mm-hmm. BBL Supercoach, or at least in, in my memory. Um, so I was just very quickly before we get into <laughs> what you've actually got planned, we've got um a, a little BBL Supercoach chat on um on Twitter. Um, and one of the one of the people in there mentioned that the Heat's team for round, well, the first couple of rounds could be shocking if they're missing a few players. And obviously they're the, mm. they're the team with that triple in round one. So uh it's gonna be yeah. really interesting. Do people stack heat players anyway? Because they've got the triple, uh even if the team's not so strong and not expected to do well. Um, or do people go the other way and does that scare them off? So that'll just be like an interesting little topic that comes up closer to I guess the first mm. first couple of games and, and when we know the teams. But um, yep. Yeah. Let's get straight into it. So you, you mentioned obviously it's not just going to be Captain Matt Short like like it has been when he pretty much broke the game. Um, did you want to do you want to go through your explanation of the VC loop and um, I guess my experience across BBL and NRL Super Coach? If you've missed anything or if I if I can add anything, I'll I'll go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, please, absolutely. So um, I mean, just for a bit of context, last season was my first ever season playing any Super Coach game, um, and I had no idea about looping i I'd, I'd seen that word uh, sort of thrown around on 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 people super coach twitter and here and there but i didn't really know what it was um and it was only like i might have been halfway through last season when you explained to me uh what 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 the bc i was so confused because you weren't looping at all and then i was like oh no i didn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what this is yeah <laughs> so um, so okay, so I think I thought it would be a good idea just for bo- both for me and for anyone else watching. Can we quickly go through what the VC loop is and uh, like what's the purpose of doing it? No, hundred um, percent. You know what we will do later on. We'll do like a little sixty second video. We share our screens and do it. I can do that on mobile. We don't need to do that right now. But um, do you want to do you want to do the explanation of, of what like how the process works exactly? No, I would rather like you to 
Oh, so right. Sorry, sorry. back to me just so it'll be sure, sure, sure. for me as well. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, well, I've slept at 4 a.m. three of the last four nights, and I'm extremely hungover. But, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll give, it a, give it a crack. Um, no, so VC looping is basically if you've got, uh, let's say, the Scorchers and the Sixers playing in the first game of the round, um, and then you've got the Renegades versus the Stars in the second game of the round, let's just imagine theoretically they all have doubles that round, right? So what you want to do is the obvious thing to do is go, all right, Sixers and Scorchers round one, uh, game one, sorry. They both have um, they they both have the double. I will captain uh, Sean Abbott, all right? So that's like the obvious thing to do. Like, oh, game one, they're playing a double. Yes, let's go. The I guess what looping is, is that you... You uh, looping, by the way, is um, loophole. <laughs> so it's the vice captain's mm. loophole. So what you're doing there is you're vice captaining someone from the first game because you know that if, or sorry, if they do poorly, then you can just captain someone from uh, the second game where there's also other options who have the double. It also works, by the way, if that player does poorly, say they get 10 points or something like that. Even if you captain... Who do I say? Stars and um, Renegades, right? So even if they didn't have the double, right? Because that first game score from uh, Sean Abbott was crap and you don't, uh, he essentially is only going to have one game later to get your captain score. So what you're trying to do is, all right, uh, you vice captain the first person. It's almost like an insurance sort of, or like a backup if they do badly. And then the second game, if it is, let's just say like a, Glenn Maxwell, right? If it's the double, then it's a no-brainer because you've already had, instead of one crap score out of two for Sean Abbott, you're getting the chance at two scores of Glenn Maxwell, right? And even if he didn't have the, um, even if he didn't have the double, you're still getting one, like a, a crack at a proper Glenn Maxwell score where, and then you're just weighing up Abbott and Maxwell because Abbott's gone poorly in that first game. It's really just, um, a, a fresh crack at someone from the second or even maybe the third game so it just opens up a lot more options because if you go um and sorry the other alternative is if uh if uh sean abbott does extremely well you know he gets uh i don't know 100 points or whatever <laughs> like he does really well in the first game then you want that score you don't want to be messing around and gambling with glenn maxwell theoretically like who knows how it'll go you've got a locked in good score Sean mm. Abbott BC in that case what you need to do is you need to sub in a non-player from your bench and sacrifice who you think will be the worst or player that's actually playing in your lineup take the worst player in your lineup out put a non-player in captain that player so what happens is because yeah. that player doesn't play uh, that doesn't end up playing your vice captain becomes your captain and then uh, the auto, like you get an auto emergency score. So obviously make sure that if you're, if you're subbing like a non-playing batsman, make sure you've got your auto emergency um, set on someone or well, someone outside of your team that is actually playing that round. Did I get that right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, anything I missed or so, anything that was a bit confusing? No, I think that's pretty much covers the basics from, at least from what I've picked up about Lupin. Um, yeah. The the thing that was really interesting to me, I was sort of looking at the schedule and I was sort of looking at the split of the games in the rounds. Now, because there are so many, and and as always happens, not just this season, but you'll want to captain doublers and this season triplers, um, right? So, um, sort of in any circumstance, right, or in most circumstances. Yep. Um, and I was wondering if we'll whether we'll see less or more looping in the early part of the season, because you'll want to captain doublers or triplers. But the first round of this season where a doubling team doesn't play the first game of the round is round mm. six. And in a nine round season, you're talking two thirds of the way. In. And that's, uh, I think that's going to be very, very interesting to watch out for. Um, I don't think I have an answer to this, let alone the right answer about <laughs> what's, uh, what, 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 what's the right way to play this. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll just have to think about it, wait and see once we have a bit more information about the teams. I think if, mm. if for example, what you said about the Heat, um, uh, what, 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 what you said about the Heat team in round one uh, does end up being true and you're like, I don't really want to captain anybody um, mm. from this team, even though they have a triple. Um, maybe you could just say, you know what, screw it. Let's just, let's just yep. ditch looping 
completely. Let's let's not even look at that right now because I'd much rather go to let's say a Scotch's gun who has a double who I'm more sure of will get will get me points. Yep. Um I was just gonna say, sorry, you kind of reminded me there of uh I don't have the the fixtures. Uh, you know what? It might just be worth a second to actually get the fixtures in front of me. Um while I, you want to continue while I, while I get the super Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, the other sort of question that came to mind is if we're sort of in this scenario where looping is like, should we, will we see more or less looping? Uh, it also made me think of something that I've learned off from FPL, for example. Um, and I just wanted to know, uh, like, do you think there's ever any merit in captaining a single gamer over a doubler? Um, uh, you know? there, there is, uh, but you, you wouldn't want to do it uh, like for example, if you had like a single game gun in round uh, in game one, and then you had like mm. a double game player gun in round two, there is no way you captain the a game one single gamer straight up. Like or like you can, but it's it, I think it's silly because you're you're locking mm. in one score for no reason at all. You could vice yes. you could vice captain a single gamer in game one, take a bit of a punt yeah. that way, knowing that if mm. they have like you know what like a top five score for the season where they just break the game um then mm. you've just done a like a a calculated gamble but straight up captain mm. a single gamer is just yeah it, it makes no actual sense you could do it for fun but i, mm. I wouldn't recommend anyone doing that um right I've, I've just got the fixtures in front of me right so i'm just having a quick look now mm. so i thought i'd just go through a very quick example so you got um heat on the triple playing the stars on a double i believe and then you've got mm. Sixers and Renegades in the second game. I feel they both have doubles as well, I think. Yes. Well, sorry, do. I can see it in front of um, me. They do. <laughs> yeah. So, like, theoretically in this scenario, like, there's a couple of things you can do. There's obviously you could vice-captain someone from the Heat, knowing that they have mm. a triple first time ever in the game. I have no idea who's going to be playing, but let's just say, like, a Spencer Johnson, for example. Mm. Uh, I can't think of anyone else from the Heat at the moment that I'd, I'd probably want to vice, but... Well, Nice is likely not going to play because the... Um, he, Aussie... Yeah, we had a thing, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, exactly. okay, let's just say Nice is playing, right? Nice is playing all three games with the Heat. Yeah. Sure, he's been in amazing batting form. He's gotten tons in England and Australia across the last six months or so. Great batting form. Obviously a good, good scene bowler. Uh, fields in some uh, decent positions as well. So, yeah, that's the obvious one. You vice-captain him. <laughs> and then you you take a, uh, who was it, Sixers, Renegade. You're probably thinking like a Sean Abbott... Um, or, or someone similar to that, right? As, as your captain, that's like the stock standard way to go. Um, I think this also brings up the conversation of most people at the start of the season pack their team with guns, guns and cheapies or value picks, right? Um, I don't mm -hmm. actually know the right answer to this either because I haven't spent a lot of time on mm -hmm. team just yet. But the interesting one is no one really starts the season with a non player. Um, like a complete non-player. And does a team have yep. a buy in the first round, so Shane, do you know? I don't. Um, I no, I think have... everyone plays in the first round. Yeah, there's quite a few games, so I assume there's no buy. So if there's no buy, how the hell are you going to loop unless you have a non-player, right? So this is where it makes it quite interesting because when I was playing around with my team, the thing that I've learned in the last sort of seat, like last year, last BBL season, this NRL season, is I've just, now uh, had some success with going really hard really early so theoretically you could have like a min price player 42k or whatever it is who's mm. literally just definitely not going to play just as an mm. enabler for your loops um, yes and I know usually in NRL super coach that kind of stuff is frowned upon longer season uh, you know like mm. usually they don't do it but I almost feel like because it's a shorter season you, you have almost three trades every round it's almost like that that sort of a it saves you that extra 20k because i don't think there's any playing uh i don't think there's many great 62k options from memory but you know the difference between 42 and 62k it saves you 20k and it enables the mm. vice captaincy loophole so it'll be yes. really interesting to see how many people kind of like take the plunge and actually do that um and how many yes. kind of play it safe knowing that um yeah yeah. Or, or sorry, la last thing I'll mention, you could actually set up your side for this. So for example, mm. if your vice, if your vice captaincy loophole, so the guy who is your vice captain, let's say Nisa, if he does gun it mm. and he's your VC, you do need the vice captaincy loophole. So I'm pretty yeah. sure before your team plays their first game, you can still trade unlimitedly. I know in NRL, it works like that. I assume yes. it works like that in yes. the NBL as well. Before so, the first round. 
Yep. yep. So I'm looking at this now. So theoretically, Nisa guns it in game one, and you've got like hmm. some Matty Jules from the Thunder or something like that. Uh, for whatever reason, you've got him on your on your bench, right? As one of your emergencies. Bang, you take hmm. him out for a 42k player make yourself a little bit of money, yeah. activate the VC loophole, captain that player, lock in Nisa score. And then like you also sort of save a little money, uh, save a little bit of money going from Jilks to a 42K mm. player, which then helps yeah. you maybe upgrade one of your other team members as well. I'm sort of thinking, mm. thinking on the run here, but uh, it started sounding pretty, <laughs> pretty aggressive and yeah. pretty interesting way to play the first couple of games. Yeah. No, fair enough. I think that makes sense. Like it's uh, that you just mapped out like one way to one way to looping. Uh, like mm -hmm. if somebody's sort of really keen on doing that, then why not? I also think what you said about um, not captaining single gamers if they play in the first game of the round makes perfect sense. By the way, um, I like there's only a very few people who would persuade me to captain them in a single game week, yeah. uh, or game round rather. Take my FPL here. <laughs> um, you know, somebody like a Matt Short or a Steve Smith. Like, you know, we, like we had Steve Smith last season or Glenn Maxwell or, you know, where we're somewhere, you're talking about uh, a level that's just so obvious, like so obviously large there in terms yeah. of the quality of the player versus the batters, the opposition batters or bowlers that they're facing. Uh, this is obviously something that you'll have to decide on game by game. But um, I absolutely think that like it's 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 it sounds so funny to say this in a season with so many doubles and in a shorter season, but this might actually be the season to be a little bit brave with your captaincy and captain uh, uh, single gamers. Uh, not just because, well, you might have not just because for the usual reason that hey, you have these these guns who might have uh, like a really really good game, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's also because there will be so many other doubles in the other parts of the season for you to catch up you know yep. if you've got a feeling about and and you can like look at the numbers and like maybe sort of like look at so like look at some of the data tools that we've got and sort of like look at the numbers and like say man i think maxwell's at the mcg hurricane's not looking good it's one game but i think i've got a feeling about him you know and yep. that's I, I i actually think it's more justifiable to Captain Maxwell in a situation like that, because even if it doesn't come off, there will be other doubles in other parts of the season where yeah. you can make this up. There will always be other opportunities in the season to captain a gun who's doubling. It'll there'll always be an Aaron Hardy or um uh, or or a Glenn Maxwell or just somebody like that who's got a double that week, um, who's going to be worth looking at, or a match short or somebody like that. Um, I think there's there there's there is more thought to be given to the captaincy from a from a strategy point of view and not just as i mentioned earlier from like there are more options on the table because there are more doubles this season yep um i, I think the other thing you, you mentioned um having a look at captaining bowlers versus batsmen um i think yeah. the interesting thing is obviously there's there's all rounders as well right um so i think it's an interesting conversation i've got a couple of thoughts um let's i think with this one let's not go too deep into it because i want to do a version of this uh, where we actually share our screen and like talk through some yeah. stats. So I think let's let's throw yeah. out our opinions now and then go deeper into it with stats next time. But sure, you go first. Yeah, sure. So um, there's always this eternal question: right? Should we captain batters or bowlers with barely any fantasy cricket game? Um, and I think it's, I mean, obviously the dream solution is all rounders, somebody who mm. bats in the top three and bowls four overs. Not everybody like that, sadly. Um, and when let's say if that player has a buy or there's like two or three competing options i think there's some real choices to be made there um but i'm actually the kind of guy i, I will say this that i'd actually be more confident about captaining a bowler over an all-rounder um mostly because i feel that we touched on this in the last episode right that there's, that there's this difference of, 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 of opinion between us when it comes to captaincies yep. but with bowlers i've always felt that you know they just one ball away from rescuing their their game. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. just takes one ball, uh, especially with guys who bowl at the death. You know that those two overs are coming at the end. You know that there's easy junk wickets to be had. You know that, like one one wicket will save it for you. Yep. Like it's or, or or one wicket will turn a good score into a league winning score or yep. something like that you know i feel like that the, the fact that that possibility is always alive is a mm. very very important reason why i 
uh, love to captain the bowler. And I think yeah. I would also put more thought into looking up the numbers and looking up the roles and scouting picks for bowler captaincies than I would for batter captaincies. Um, mm. There's only a handful of batters that, that I really captain um, in this game, uh, considering fixture and all these other, and all of these other things. But yeah. um, I think with bowlers, there's I. I, I think there's more room to be a little bit more experimental, but I think the main point here is bowlers are the only class of player that I'd actually give this much thought to when it comes to captaincy. Yep, I think we do. Well, as always, we differ on a couple of different things, but I think the other thing is you, um, especially when I see you put out like with WBBL, it's awesome because like pretty much everyone on our Discord that follows ourselves would know nothing or know very little about the WBBL, right? So when you talk about matchups and venues and and stuff like that, it's actually really cool because you know you're mm. providing information that we really uh don't don't have or like just like don't have that awareness right whereas with the bbl i feel like what once like i always feel like with t20 cricket i come to like november and i feel like oh, i don't know anything about t20 cricket three games into the bbl <laughs> like, oh, i've been doing this for the best part of a decade of course i know about this stuff so i always like have this <laughs> weird um yeah, anyways, it's a weird feeling. But it, uh, going straight into the couple of things I was going to say, I think with batsmen and bowlers, you're also talking about like consistency versus uh, consistency versus ceiling. So like I know the ceiling, actually, you know what? It's mainly consistency. I don't think the ceiling part is necessarily right. I think we're going to have to test that out next week because I, in my mind, I'm thinking of like a, a seven like a quick fire 60 or potentially that 80 to 100 score and what would a batsman end up getting if they got that versus like a bowler mm. getting a, a tight like a, a an economical three far or like just you know mm. blitzing to four wickets or something like that like how often these mm. things happen like that that'll be a really cool one yes. to look at and then we can essentially make a list of like super coach scores above a certain range and like how many of them were done and then split them away and roll Th that's the analysis stuff that we can do right but mm. from my point of view i look at it as like consistency wise you're almost always going to want to go with bowlers because as you just said a bowler could like a bowler's range might fall within that sort of like one to three wicket bucket um they get points for dot balls and economy rate etc etc right whereas with a batsman um a t20 simulator actually shows this really well there's and obviously we can do historical analysis super easy to do even for a top three batsman uh failure is the most common thing that's going to happen to to a batsman like that sort of zero to 10 or zero to 15 score is the most common outcome for a batsman so i guess when they get with a batsman my mentality is like that's all right like i do have two innings like i do have two cracks with this batsman and hopefully they can go really big in one of them it's just my personality i love the high risk high ceiling mm -hmm. option right whereas with a bowler mm -hmm. i think it's like especially if you think about like that one game it's a lot of pressure on a batsman to basically he has to get you like 50 runs to be most likely to be worth it whereas with it with a bowler as you just said he could get that like one death wicket and that's already like one wicket is already an okay score and then obviously a little mm -hmm. bit of economy helps um I know a few dot balls help, et cetera. And then two wickets, you're already at a decent score just from memory. Um, I, I feel like it's with a like the the bowling option is just a lot safer because you're kind of always playing within a certain range most times. Whereas with a batsman, you could very easily fall way below. Um and, and obviously like the the amount of times that they go way above, I feel like would definitely be, mm. be less as well. So I, I don't know. It, I feel like we're we're spitballing without having the numbers in front of us. So we'll, we'll stop here. We'll, we'll go into yeah. it a lot deeper um, next week, I guess, mm. with some numbers. Just, uh, I actually have some numbers on this right now. I was pulling oh, them yeah. up while you were talking, Sorry. and I sort of thought it's a good idea to maybe throw throw a little bit of numbers behind a lot of the sort of theoretical chat that we've been going through right now. You know, I thought yeah. about what you said um, regarding uh, batters, and the first thing that came to my mind is just like, you know, strike rate bonus is fine, but I. Yeah. But I do like the guys who can accumulate safely because they have more like because the certainty of them reaching hitting their strike rate threshold or like a 50 run threshold is much greater. And it's not like you get points for boundaries or like all those other things that I'm actually quite used to in IPL fantasy for the years, like yeah. years and years into the past now. But you know, I looked at the numbers from last season and Chris Lynn hit his 20 plus score threshold 81% of the time, you know, compared to a lot of other sort of options for example Ashton Turner that figure was 57 Aaron Hardy was 53 Aaron Finch was 46 you know um 
uh Josh English was 46 Matt Short was 57 so yeah. I'm just sort of like just throwing out a bunch of numbers here but um I think those guys who can actually safely accumulate are the batters most 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 worth considering for captaincy on a regular basis I think yeah. when you talk about consistency this is what I try to look for this is what I'm trying to scout for in super coach which is do you hit your strike rate threshold um in instant do you hit your 50 plus run threshold enough times? Uh, that's what will make me consider you as a captain. If you're a batter, uh, I'm not so sure about uh, I'm not so sure about your strike rate ceiling. Um, mm. With some of these guys, it's always a thing, right? So, um, Lynn, I know strikes at 141, short strikes at 144, but Lynn hits his strike rate threshold 81% of the time, um, and uh, short did it 57% of the time. So, like just on mm. pure batting numbers, you know, there's an argument there that Lynn is actually probably like a more um like a like a much much greater certainty for hitting that yep. strike rate bonus and in the same neighborhood when it comes to the points that you get for that bonus you know yeah uh, so, i think uh, that's the sort of thinking here yeah yeah i was just gonna say sorry very quickly this is uh this reminds you of a discussion that we always have on um the nrl fantasy fanatics forum i've been part of that community for like over 10 years and it's funny like mm. the diehard fantasy fans usually end up being quite conservative or, or like they always go yeah. for like the more predictable option which i find really interesting because i i obviously never do that but mm. i think because i've been playing fantasy and supercoach for over a decade now um both or bbl i've been playing for since whenever the comp sort of became the bbl um and nrl i've been playing for almost 15 years now i, I think what i've realized mm. is that like i used to try to just do the equivalent of oh, what would it be like the equivalent of like an opening batsman who doesn't bowl and doesn't field in good positions and is super high ceiling but fails a lot that's mm. when I started playing fantasy and super coach that's what I used to try to do obviously over the years mm. I've wisened up a little bit and realized that's not the best play but now like I can't <laughs> let go of that like my roots I guess and, and what I want to do so now what I try to yeah. do the equivalent of it now would be like trying to find players who sort of like I, I don't look for how often they do this and can they do it consistently because what I try to do is look for ceiling and basically uh, play the game in a different way where I'm going round by round or like, you know, like they say every, every time I'm captaining a guy who has a double, for example, right? I'm looking at who's got the double, uh, most likely like a batsman uh, who bowls a little bit. And um, so like the safety comes with the like, the fielding in good positions or bowling a couple of overs but I, I want the upside of of being like a top three batsman that could go huge and obviously across mm. two games I'm thinking I'm happy to cop the downside of like one batting failure hoping he goes big in the other one but I guess I'm sort of always looking for upside with mm. a base rather than going for consistency and also sorry like yeah. the point I'm trying to make is going from round one where it might be like you know, say Glenn Maxwell, for example, right? Like I, I go for Maxwell yeah. and then round two, I'll be like, oh, okay. These are the two teams that have the double. There's four or five legitimate options. I also start to then have a look at like who's in form and who are the popular captain options and really try mm. to go someone else. Because I think in most, uh, mm. like in, in the NRL season this year, it was uh, Cleary and Hines for that first sort of like half of the mm. season or so. They were kind of like, yeah. it was really silly where like, you know, they both almost had identical averages and upside, but then everyone yeah. kept on captaining Cleary, I think it was, just from reputation. So I was like, all right, yeah. well, if the data is like very similar, but like, mm. you know, the, 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 the weightage is like 75% Cleary and 25% Heinz, well, stuff it, I'll go Heinz. There's no real reason to not go Heinz because everything's telling you they're pretty much in the same bucket. So I also try to do that. Just like, Anything I can mm. do to kind of give myself some sort of differentiator, as long as yeah. you're not actually making a silly decision by going like a Tim David captain when he bats at number six. Uh, although I know he's right. other things that you're gonna. <laughs> that you're I, gonna I, yeah, I'm gonna. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, let's uh, let's get into <laughs> okay. it. So I think... you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought that up to attack me. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so all right, oh, let's man. let's move yeah, on because um, I know. Uh, let's okay. go into the captaincy yes. options. Do you want yes. to just basically so, just list out a few of them and, and then we can yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So um the other thing that I thought is is actually a great idea if you if you actually spend some time on your super coach team and you're spending more and more time as the season gets closer. Um it's also I think a good idea to make a list of captaincies just to sort of like captaincy depth is kind of what I've called it in my show notes mm. uh, and as well as the hierarchy of these captaincy options 
um, and I sort of get into what I mean by that. You know, so at, at all clubs, there are some guys who you will just never captain, right? Yep. And there are some guys who you will always only captain. And this is kind of related because if, let's say, the second group or, or, or the second type of player is at the club um, and you've got the first type of player as well, the reason you're not captain in that first type of player is because the second type of player, second type of player exists. That so, like, you will only ever, like, you'd never captain, let's say, like a what's his name, um, like a Bo Webster when Maxwell is there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, that's what I mean. When Maxwell wasn't playing last season, Bo Webster was was great. Like the role was great mm-hmm. and everything was great. He was doing well, but you never captain him over Maxwell. Uh, so I thought, you know, looking at the clubs, it's a good idea to sort of narrow it down to where each club stands on the super coach captaincy radar um yep. kind of like how we did with the prices as well right where we try to look for which clubs have good like a depth of cheap options we came on we 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 identified the renegades as one of those clubs um yep. as well as the hierarchy of captaincy options you know and the example that i want to give for this one is from the strikers they have a double in round two and i've written in my notes uh, reading from the verbatim um i will captain match shot without thinking if the double lands uh but i need to know that the fixture or the ground is good if i'm going to captain someone else from the strikers like Rashid, you know and uh, uh the, 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 there's a very particular reason why i picked this example um uh Rashid, so that strikers double in two is thunder and sixes um rashid has um and i, and I tweeted about this the other day um Rashid hasn't taken a ton of wickets against the Thunder, but his record against the Strikers, is, uh, sorry, his record against the Sixers is excellent. It's like he's got, I think, he, like he's hit his three wicket threshold four out of the last five innings, something, something, something absolutely crazy like that. So, yep. um, like, I think because of the particular combination of the fixture and the double that's landed for him, that's what's considering that's what's making me think about a possible Rashid captaincy in two rather than just going match out without thinking, you know. Um yeah. whereas if this was in any other scenario, um, I would just captain match out without thinking. I think with some of these guys, it's it's very, very clear. The stars have doubles in one, three, and five. If you're captaining stars guys in any of those rounds, you know that you're just gonna captain Maxwell. Um yeah. and I think it's very important to be clear about who you want to um captain and what would be your uh, 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 criteria or your checklist for yeah. why you would want to captain somebody, you know. Yep. Um, hey, I also uh, think it's worth to say. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, Shane, mm-hmm. do you want to just list out? Uh, do you have captaincy options for all uh, all the clubs playing um, out, or do you just have a few players like listed? Just a few, just, just a few players here and there. Uh, okay. You do know? you want to list all the players, and then we can maybe pick one or two to sort of go into more detail for? Sure, sure. So um, I thought uh, so. one of the purposes of this exercise is also to expand the pool of options and find opportunities yeah. for captaincy that you might not normally consider. Um, I think uh, Lennon, Short, Rashid, these are the guys from the strikers who really jumped out to me. Um, yeah. I thought from the heat, depends on if they play in the triple, but uh, yeah. Monroe, Nieser, um, even Sam Billings might be worth looking at. Um, Ooh, wow. From the Hurricanes, I thought... Um, uh, Tim David, and I'll get to the reasoning mm. for this uh, in a bit, um, <laughs> is, is worth thinking about. Uh, even Matthew Wade, uh, McDermott obviously is the sort of uh, option that you have there. Uh, but I think uh, Nathan Ellis, I think, is the is the bowling captain that really stands out to me. Uh, the new uh, the new captain of the, well, the uh, captain. Hurricanes. Yeah. Well. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, Renegade, I think, have guys like uh, DeCock or um, uh, Tom Rogers or... Um, Probably even one of the one of the one of the um, uh, senior bats, you know, like a Finch or a Sean Marsh, depending on the fixture. Um, I no, think with the stars, you have Maxwell Finch, and Scholes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with uh, the stars, you actually have a few all-rounders: Bo Webster, uh, Maxwell, Marcus, Marcus Tonis, um, um, probably even Rogers as well himself. Um, Scotchers have a few. You got Inglis and Hardy. Those side. guys really stand out. Yeah, on the side, um, you've got, um, uh, um, what's his face, uh, Richardson, you've got Berendorf, you've got Ty, there's a few options there. there. Uh, Sixers have a few bowling options as well. Um, there's Tom Curran, there's even Rehan Emmer is in the picture. Um, there's, from the batting captains, uh, this guy stood out to me, James Vince, who I've talked about. Um, uh, I'm looking at the Thunder now, Daniel Sams maybe, if you've got him in your team, Alex Hales, Cam Bancroft. Um, somebody like with the with the Thunder Bowlers, it's a bit um, 
like there are a few competing options although i don't know if i captain them yeah uh, I, th- I think the Hatcher interesting thing is like Andrew. you're you're listing all these players yeah. who are all good players but i don't think yeah. like it's funny like whenever you see the game though it's always like yeah yeah, you know, three or four players will be like 90 plus percent of the captaincy pool. Yeah. So I think like, I'm really yeah. like, I was going to say like, the reason why I say just list them all out mm. right now and we'll maybe just you pick one and I pick one and then we'll move on because I was thinking, I think yeah. this would be great analysis for our discord and for like a Twitter mm. thread. I think if we, mm. if we go into every team and every option, I'm just about to have a coffee and this, this party could go on for two hours. So I reckon, yeah, if, if you want to, if you want to maybe do Tim David, cause I know you've actually mm. you've mentioned him. So I think maybe you talk about team david and i'll pick one of mine and then we'll uh we'll move on <laughs> yeah sure so um again just to sort of clarify uh the goal isn't to sort of suggest that these guys are all equally legitimate captaincy options who sort of uh um you i just keep just to give you more names to think about and obviously uh the purpose of this is to establish that captaincy hierarchy right that the whole yep. i will captain match out without thinking but if you can give me a case for captaining rashid khan in the same game I'll consider. It. I'll think about it. I might not do it, yeah. but it's something to think about. Um, yeah. So the Tim David thing. So um, it, it's really interesting. Now I was listening to um, the sort of the Inside Fantasy Sports uh, uh, Super Coach Brain and Super Coach Big Horse were on there. Shout out to them, by the way. Um, and I sort of listened to their uh, team preview for the Hurricanes, you know. And um, just the first thing that really hit me is this: as they were sort of going through the team names and just sort of talking about how they might line up, it's just like my first impressions based on that were that Hurricanes batting looks weak and like lacking in depth. I mean, they were talking about... Do they about, not have Wade uh, and McDermott in the top three? Uh, I think they do. And but Jewel... I mean, do you really want to rely on... Do you really want to rely on McDermott? Um, it's a bit... Yeah. Um, but they were talking about Chris Jordan batting at seven. And oh. their other bowlers were Nathan Ellis, Paddy Dooley... Um, like I don't think that, that there's a lot of depth in there. Uh, and I think about you know how Tim David top scored for them last season, and mm. it seems like captaining a guy who bats at like number five, number six seems like a bit of a waste. Um, but you know, just sort of thinking about that, and I was just, it just it was just making me think about like man, if I have the opportunity with the Hurricanes and they do double and seven, that's their only double by the way. They've got a ah, horrible fixture list. Uh, yeah. But I think I would actually consider Tim David given the batting around him. Um, I it's 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 definitely very very left field, but mm. uh, it's just something to think about for me. I mean, you're talking about a guy who uh, scored 350 runs and top scored for the uh, strikers. He was striking at 160 as he always does. Um, he um, he got nine 20 plus scores last season, which is proportionally the same uh, number as Tom Rogers, by the way, which is that's crazy. Which is more than Cam, which is more than Cam Bancroft, which is more than Ashton Turner, which is more than Aaron Hardy uh, or Aaron Finch, uh, Ollie Davies. I could sort of go on here, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He only got 150, I know, but like he was hitting that threshold and he was scoring them. Of course, those yeah, runs yeah. Quickly, you know, and it's just like I probably still won't do it. But like this is maybe you know you know what uh, the best part of this is? So this is so typical. Yeah. Like I've essentially mocked you for this accidentally, by the way. I said Tim David and then looked at the notes and said so realized that you'd actually <laughs> mentioned David. So I've mocked you yeah. accidentally. You've then started to build a case for him, and but it's like the riskier play. So you might not actually yes. do it, but now I really want to. Yeah. <laughs> so like for me though, like I do love taking risks, but there needs to be a base to it. Mm. So if he's got a bowling mm. role where he's bowling at least, let's say, averaging two to three overs a game and four sometimes, I think I'll do it. Mm. Like he doesn't need to. For me, it's like mm. I always try to think of like cricket, especially bloody T Twenty cricketers. I don't read too deeply into form, and I also don't read too deeply into um like matchups and venues oh sorry venues from a macro point of view i do like in terms of you know yeah. about high scoring small ground mcg big round yeah. lower scoring running uh docklands uh the renegades home ground usually lower scoring so i read into it from a macro point of view but the mm. thing that i've been saying you've been doing really well which is like the wbbo like you know balls and runs matchups and stuff for me most of the time 
T20 cricket, mm. my view is it's super random game. So with those small sample sizes of like 20 balls and 50 balls and 100 balls, I don't read too deeply into it. Whereas if we had uh, you know, spin V pace stuff with a sample size much bigger, I start reading into that mm. as well. So anyways, I, I could go on here, but you've actually talked me into Team David. As long as you remind me, I reckon I'll I'll, I'll do it. So just remind <laughs> me, it'll be a, a great talk yeah. point, round seven. Yeah. You mentioned the bowling role. So last season, he was averaging 9.75 balls in innings, which is um, a little over one over. So one and a bit overs, which is not great from like an all-rounder captaincy point of view. Maybe if he has a larger role this season, hell, why not? Mm. Um, or at least bring him into the team if you're not going to captain him. Maybe. No, 100%. Um, and maybe I'll As do... one of your single gamers. Yeah. Sure. Um, maybe I'll have a quick, uh, a quick crack at my one and then we'll we'll wind up so i'll just look at round one can you just tell me quickly who's got the uh the doubles in round one i won't look at the heat um for one so there's this... a triple uh at the brisbane heat yeah uh, well, who, who who the doubles? Who the doubles. so um, so the have a double sixers have a double yeah scotches sixers renegades um scotches sixers renegades heat have the triple and stars Okay, right. Uh, I feel like almost every team has a double. Um, let's go. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So what what I also try to do is this isn't like a major part of your decision, but I think like the, I'm not saying anything sort of like that you guys aren't thinking about at the moment. But I think with so many teams having the doubles, it'll be really interesting with Super Coach Premium or Gold or whatever it's called. You can actually have a look at the um the captaincy percentages live i think before around stars mm. i don't know if you came before round one but I'll, I'll play around with it after but i think I'll, I'll this is literally my thought process i will definitely vice captain a heat player for the chance at the triple and i'll definitely captain a double gamer but the the fixtures go bloody hell that goes against what i was going to say but the fixtures go start um uh, what's it called brisbane heat and the stars game one so obviously if you vice uh Vice Captain Nisa, theoretically, you'd have to captain a Sixers player or a Renegades player or a Scorchers player. I think I think they're the other three teams that have a double. Mm. Um, so going from that, the obvious ones, like obviously, there's a bunch of options at the at the Scorchers um, and probably the Sixers as well. Um, I would try to go. Maybe is who are the couple of options that you had from the Renegades? Please don't say Aaron Finch again. <laughs> are, are, there any, are there any good all rounds? Oh, oh, uh, okay. Yes, yes, Quinton <laughs> Decock. There you go. Perfect. Wicket keeper. So a little bit of base with potential catches and stumpings. Um, yeah. uh, although the Renegades usually aren't great, so you never know. But somewhat of a base. It is like usually a lower scoring ground there, but they're not play Is GM HBA Stadium some like out of it, it's not uh Docklands, right? Like it's some um it's like Gold it's Coast, like Country Victoria or something like that. Yeah. Like essentially they're not playing at Docklands the first two grounds. They're playing at SCG and then GM HBA, which I forgot where it is. Is that Docklands? Is that a different name for Docklands? Uh Geelong. No, but is GM HBA? No. That's not Marvel. That's no. not Docklands. It's not Docklands. That's, that's Marvel Stadium. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So essentially, he's got two games where he's not playing at his home ground, which is traditionally lower scoring. Yes, they're playing the the Sixers and the the Scorchers, but I'm not reading too much into that. As long as he's there, that's who I'd go. And the reasoning is is from my point of view. Uh, or sorry, the, the only reason I'd go against that is if there's like a clear all rounder, like if Aaron Hardy is batting three or Mitch Marsh is batting three and bowling three to four overs. Yeah. And we know that yeah. then sure. I'll, I'll probably end up going them. But if not, um, if there's no obvious like batting top three, bowling four overs kind of pick that I'm missing, then I'll go Quinton mm. Decock because I reckon a lot of people may not pick him. And even if they've picked him, they might go for like a more well-known, like uh, well-known BBL, um, player like from the scorchers like from their dominant sides kind of thing so that that's who mm. i'd go just as like a little bit of a risky play but i, th I think that these mm. are the things that i think between you and i we've kind of covered a lot of the main things to to look at you know consistency upside who they're playing where they're playing um uh, whether it's specific matchups data that obviously our men's um t20 portal has um, or whether it's just like macro venue stats, I think those are quite important as well. So I think we'll, we'll definitely have a bit of a, a deeper think in terms of like what stuff that we can add 
now that we're obviously talking about it, it's getting me thinking of like, well, we have all these tools. People can check them out for free. So if you guys have suggestions, feel free to let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to like do these pods and then oh, we're going to be meeting up in person exactly three days from now. Like we'll literally be about to catch up for a coffee about 72 hours from now, which is going to be amazing. So I think when we do that, we could obviously like go much deeper into this, start building our data mm. tools and then um, I think we can, obviously you can have a crack at maybe like writing our first article based on that. Um, and yes. the next party that we'll do, we'll actually share our screen to much go, go much mm. deeper into the stats. Um, yeah. I've maybe we'll from... record a little pod uh, when we catch up. Just, just, just sort of chat super coach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for like, for context, for the people or for the, I know we're not, uh, we're not hugely famous just yet for this pod. I think we get about 50 to hundred people or maybe just over actually checking this out, but we're going to be doing a lot more work um, during the BBL. And the cool part of it is um, I'll be in India. So every, what is it from now till the first week of January. So Shane and I will be catching up roughly once or twice a week for the next six weeks. So we'll have opportunities to, to work together on this stuff. We've actually just hired two two other full-time marketing mm. uh, guys in the team as well. So we've got three marketing guys, myself, a couple of the data guys in the team. We're going to be punching a lot, a, a lot of BBL stuff. Oh, I can't wait to actually like make our teams, um, see how everyone goes with their captaincy decisions, and then watch, like actually watch the BBL games um, yeah. at a, I would say sports bar, but I've kind of given up the hope. Maybe it'll have to be on one of our laptops um, in the end. <laughs> we can do uh, we can do a bit of a Discord live stream for the 3,000 people that yeah. are there. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh three well, 3,300. I'm expecting 3,300 people to be live watching our uh, every move on <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, that, that's awesome. That was that was actually really cool, Sushan. I think for both of us, um mm. talking it through. I, I know you obviously are a little bit more prepared than I am, but I think for me, like actually talking it through with you and looking at the fixtures, uh, looking at who doubles and yeah, yeah. You're you're exhausted and and say you're hungover, but you still made more sense explaining the VC loop than 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 me. So. <laughs> no, uh, it was funny. Like at the start of this episode, I was hungover and like mentally exhausted from the three or four night four nights of the last five. I've slept at either three or four a.m. So I've gone from that Jeez. to uh, talking about BBL Super Coach with you, having a, a double shot ice latte, and now I've got a. Mm. So I'm gonna do one more podcast today. Pack my bags and I'm and I'm off for six weeks. So uh, it's it's gonna be a pretty action packed next few hours. But anyways, so Shane, we'll uh, we'll let you go. Um, for everyone else, again, Google Wiki Linktree. Check out this pod, all the other pods, all the other content, data tools, Discord. It's all free. Um, enjoy your weeks, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next week.